Our plan for this discussion is to get familiar with annotations. We will write one compile time annotation and one runtime annotation from the scratch. Let's have a look at our runtime annotation. For our example, what we will do is that we will write an annotation which will call default constructor of objects which are annotated by it. For example, if a member of a class, let's say string, is annotated with init annotation, once we call initializer, our annotation will perform its initialization by calling its constructor. Here, annotation is declared in a Java file very similar to interface, except there is one difference. There is a at the rate prefix with interface keyword. The name of the interface will be the name of our annotation. You can see here two tags are on top of our annotation declaration. These are retention and target. When we are going to write annotation for runtime, we want to mark this as runtime. What retention policy does is that, is that it tells compiler to keep our annotation until the runtime. Here in our example, we will be using Java API of reflection to manipulate fields at runtime. So we want to tell the compiler to keep our, our annotation at runtime. Second annotation or marker, as we say, this interface, this annotation declaration has is target. It tells the compiler on which element type our annotation can be applied. Here, we want to initialize our class members or class fields, so we mentioned here as element type dot field. We will see other types of element type and retention policy in later on this video. Let's have a look at our compile time annotation. In our, exam in our example, what we will do is that we will write an annotation which will generate some code. Specifically for Android, we are using an annotation that will generate get method for fragment class. So whenever a class is annotated with instance interface, sorry, instance uh, annotation, our code will generate a get method that will be responsible for creating a fragment instance. So the developer does not have to write every time a get method whenever he writes a new fragment. <coughs> our declaration of this compile time annotation is very similar to our runtime annotation, except there are a few differences. Here we provided retention policy as source. This tells the compiler to use this annotation while generating bytecode from the source classes. Once the bytecode is generated from the source classes, this annotation is, will be discarded from the code. So this annotation's lifecycle will only be in source files. Second thing is, second thing is what we, what we change here is target. We set this target to type. Previously, we set our target to field. What the difference make, what, what type makes difference here is that type supports adding annotation to class enum or interface types. In our example, we're going to apply this annotation on fragment class. So we need to specify this as type. Let's talk about retention policies that we used earlier. In Java annotation processing, there are three types of retention policies that are supported. One is a source type. This type is used when we are planning to generate code and no further requirement of this annotation is required in the future. Source type 
annotations are used to generate code. Once the code is generated at compile time, these annotations are not useful, so the compiler discards them from going into the bytecode. Another type is class. This type is used when we use, when we want to manipulate some bytecode. This this the, the annotations which are uh, described with class retention policy are kept in the bytecode and discarded at runtime. So when we want to manipulate bytecode, we use class annotation. As we have seen, the retention policy describes at what stage the, our annotation is discarded from the code. Runtime annotations or runtime retention policy tells the compiler that this annotation must be shipped with the bytecode and in the executable binary. So whenever the Java code is used is using reflection APIs, it can find this annotation. In fact, if, if an annotation is marked as retention policy source, that annotation will never be available at runtime through Java reflection APIs. So runtime annotations are preserved for every stage in the code and are generally used when we want to use that annotation through Java reflection APIs. Usually to modify fields or objects at runtime. Let's revisit element types that we used earlier in our annotations. These are element types that Java supports while applying an annotation on fields or objects that annotation can be applied to. The first one is type element type. Uh, type element type is used to, to apply annotation on any type declaration. Type declaration means any class or interface or enum definition. Second one here mentioned is type parameter. This is used when we want to apply an annotation in a method parameter. Third one is field annotation, which we discussed earlier, as if you want to apply an annotation on a field of class or any field of a class, we will mark that annotation element type as field. Next one is constructor element type. If you want to write an annotation, that uh, can be applied to constructor, we want to make sure that element type of that annotation is marked as constructor. Next one is method. Now, if you want to use our annotation with methods, like we, see, like we have seen in example earlier, the test or deprecated or override, those are annotation which were marked by element type as method to be used with methods. Now the last type is very special one. It's annotation type. You can in Java you can also do this. If you want, if we want to annotate an annotation, we can also do that. In order to make sure that our custom annotation can be used or applied or on another annotation declaration or definition in a Java class, we can mark that as annotation type. 